So I am Sam Bakken, and I'm Senior Product Marketing Manager at OneSpan, uh, responsible for our mobile solutions. Uh, the big one we solve is, you know, U.S. banks alone are losing something like $31 billion a year uh, to fraud. And so uh, at OneSpan, we are helping banks and institutions protect themselves and their customers against that fraud, whether it's, um, you know, account takeover fraud, application fraud, new account fraud. Um, and we really offer a broad portfolio of security solutions um, and technologies to allow for real-time fraud detection and prevention, as well as the optimization of uh, the customer experience itself through um, things like onboarding when people are signing up for accounts. Uh, we have a technology that allows people to do that completely digitally um, without having to visit a branch, for example. Um, and that's, you know, I think we're seeing more and more consumers really actually preferring uh, that way to, to start accounts with some financial institutions. Again, whether it's identity verification, fraud prevention, uh, risk analytics, mobile application security, uh, multi-factor authentication, biometrics, machine learning, um, and, and e-signatures, you name it, uh, we have a solution that we've you know helped financial institutions integrate, and they've you know seen 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 the success with those solutions. So again, that that comprehensiveness of our solution, I would say, is what really sets us apart. A lot of banks and financial institutions, they sort of approach mobile um, a little hesitantly. They're a little worried about the risk um, there. And the, the issue with that is that I think that we're really seeing more and more uh, from consumers that their preference is uh, leaning towards mobile, you know, not only in banking, really in any sort of interaction with uh, brands and that sort of thing. So. Um, Banks have to really, uh, you know, I like to say that the best customer experience anywhere kind of sets the bar everywhere. So banks can't give up on mobile um, and really the banks that are really embracing mobile, offering more services through that channel, doing it in a secure way. Um, they're really uh, setting themselves apart. And I'm, I'm I myself, I think that really mobile, uh, the mobile channel is kind of the key battleground for uh, differentiation in this market right now. So, uh, you know, helping banks understand that they can provide consumers more services through uh, their mobile banking apps and that it is actually possible to do that in a secure way. Um, you know, you need to take a layered approach. There's a couple of aspects to that, um, but, but it can be done and consumers want it. And not only do they want more services, they also ask and want those uh, services to also be secure um, so that they're protected against fraud themselves. I can't really name any one, but I like any of these organizations that are saying, hey, this is, you know, this may be how things were done, but can we do this better? Um, can we do this in a different way? Um, and not letting sort of legacy technology um, or, or sort of, uh, you know, crabs that are kind of trying to pull them back in uh, to the barrel to stop them from innovating. People that are a little bit kind of mavericks about that, I guess I get excited about. And I think that, you know, this isn't exactly a new trend, um, but there will continue to be a, a talent gap um, in two ways. One, I think there's a bit of a, it's, it's a little bit hard to hire and retain, um, you know, Android and iOS development talent. Um, so that's a challenge. But then adding to that as well, uh, finding mobile developers that also um, have some security expertise is also particularly challenging. And so I think that what we're going to see in the coming year and years is, is just more and more tools and solutions that, that make it easier for developers to be building security into mobile apps from the beginning. That's particularly important for uh, financial institutions uh, specifically. And, you know, these, these developers, they just, 
there's there's actually an annual report. It's called the DevSecOps Community Survey, a big survey of, de of developers. And for the past three years, almost half of them have, re have reported that they do think security is important, but they don't have time for it. Um, so, you know, a lot of the, the app development teams out there, they don't have the time or the expertise um, to ensure that, that the apps that they're putting out there on the market are as secure as they can be. And just, you know, one more proof point on that is there was a recent study of 30 financial services apps um, from the Google Play Store um, where they, they tested, tested those apps for, you know, their resilience to attack and, and kind of did some code analysis and that sort of thing. And only one of 30 apps, and these, you know, these were apps from large banks, small banks, you know, alternative lenders and that sort of thing. Only one was really sort of all the way buttoned up. And I would argue you can never say that something is 100% secure, but it's just showing that, you know, as these mobile threats uh, increase in volume and sophistication, it seems as if mobile apps and their security maybe isn't keeping pace. So again, long story short, more tools that make it easier for developers to be building app security into their mobile apps from the start because they want to be you know differentiating their customer experience they're not necessarily app security as experts so you know let's let's empower them to to kind of do the right thing with uh, technology that makes that easy for them This, this is this is a cliche that's almost overused these days, but you know, where where do attackers go? They go where the money is. Where is the money? Well, it's in payment apps, it's in banking apps. So yeah, anything that you're leaving exposed out there, um, you know, just as anybody can kind of download those apps from the app stores, attackers can do the same thing and kind of poke and prod those apps to find those weaknesses. Um, and then, you know, if it's worth their time and money, which in, you know, we can come up with multiple examples where that's true, uh, they will then figure out how to exploit it and make money off of that. I think there's there's sort of two perspectives to look at that from. Um, you know, one, there's consumers. What can consumers do? Well, you know, consumers are sort of beholden to the operating system vendors or their carriers in a lot of situations. Um, but, you know, the tips there are just, you know, keep your device up to date. Um, really make sure that you are pretty much there's there's rarely a good reason to be downloading um, mobile apps from stores that are not uh, the google play store or the apple app store um, you know some advanced users i know would argue against what i'm saying but i'm talking to the general populace here um, and you know even then you know shady apps make it onto to google play and they make it onto uh, the apple app store as well and so you really got to pay, try to pay close attention to, to the reviews. And, you know, if there's people saying this app didn't work um, or it was acting funny or et cetera, you really got to pay attention to that. And you also have to pay attention and, and kind of try to think critically about the reviews as well, because in some cases in the Google Play Store, attackers will actually um, sort of automate positive reviews of their apps to give people the impression that it's a good app. So you just, you really gotta be careful, you know, really make sure that the app that you download is really gonna improve the quality of your life in some way uh, that is more um, more than, than sort of, you know, potentially putting yourself at risk. So you gotta be careful there. And then I would say, you know, providers of the apps, the app developers, I really do think there is some responsibility there um, to make sure that the apps are secure. Um, and I think more and more we're seeing that that these organizations realize that sort of their name being thrown in a headline that talks about their mobile app getting hacked in some way, they realize that that's dangerous and that and that, that uh, can affect their you know revenue, their customer acquisition and that sort of thing. Um, so we, gotta, we just got to take it seriously. You got to be giving developers, um, you know, secure code training. You got to train, give them the education that they need. Um, you got to be doing testing regularly um, to, you know, essentially automate sort of hacking attacks against the apps to see what problems that that might find. In addition to that, you need to be doing a, um, a regular penetration testing where you have somebody that's kind of an expert in trying to crack and exploit apps, is taking a deep look at it, and then in addition to that, I'm gonna argue that you really gotta make sure that you're using um, what's called in-app protection, uh, also sometimes referred to as app shielding or runtime application self-protection. Um, without get, getting too deep, it's essentially this kind of technology that's uh, 
uh, it, it's uh, integrated, it's, it's wrapping the app um, after it's been built and monitoring for bad things like malware, like overlay attacks, or these sorts of um, things that, uh, these sorts of vectors and, and methods that attackers are using, it recognizes that if that is targeting the app and then the app will you know, stop that from happening before damage can be done. So I talked for a while, that's because it's a multi-layered process. There are multiple things that need to be done, but without a doubt, it's worth the investment because on the other side, attackers are definitely investing time and money in finding ways to exploit these apps. So that's what I guess I'd say.